little more than a century ago, an important botanical discovery was reported from Japan. In 1896, Hirase Sakugoro discovered flagellated sperm in a seed of ginkgo biloba. Then Ikeno Seichiro found the same phenomenon in Cycas revoluta. Botanists around the world were excited by these discoveries. In the higher plants, like most gymnosperms and angiosperms, male gametes, or non-flagellated sperm cells, are sent direct to egg cells through pollen tubes. In lower plants, flagellate sperm cells swim towards egg cells in water. The discoveries made by Hirase and Ikeno indicated that the ginkgo and cycads are intermediate forms between higher and lower plants on the evolutionary line. Among the seed plants, it is only the ginkgo and cycads which have been found to have flagellated sperm cells in their life cycles. In the last few years, at the end of the 20th century, the detailed process of fertilization of these higher plants has been recorded successfully for the first time in the living state. It's thought that all life originated in the sea, and that later certain organisms adapted to life on land. Land plants are all considered, therefore, to have evolved from a species of green freshwater algae. The green alga mesostigma, a flagellate, is thought to be the closest relative to the original ancestors of land plants. The green body seen here is a chloroplast, where photosynthesis takes place. The red spot at the centre is the stigma, which is photosensitive. Two flagella are attached to a dimple in the middle. The organism has no cell wall, and the outer body is covered with scales, which is a common feature in primitive green flagellates. Cell division of mesostigma is shown here using time-lapse video microscopy. The central part of the organism furrows before dividing into two. This primitive process of cytokinesis is found in many organisms, including algae and all animal cells. This multicellular green alga, coleochaete, lives in fresh water when in a non-free-living state. Cell division enlarges its body size, but does not increase its population. For this, it produces zoospores for non-sexual reproduction and eggs and sperm for sexual reproduction. This transparent sphere is an antheridium containing sperm cells. The large green part at the tip is the eugonium, which contains egg cells. The fertilized egg in the eugonium is protected by a covering of cells. This protection is regarded as the first evolutionary step which led ultimately to life on land. This is a caraphyte, which is thought to be the closest relative of the first plants that made the transition from the sea to the land. It has a slender pineapple-shaped eugonium and a spherical antheridium. Only one egg is held in the eugonium, but the antheridium carries many sperms. Here, antheridial filaments emerge from the antheridium. These filaments are divided by cell walls into many compartments, each of which contains a sperm. When a sperm matures, it swims out into the water.
sperm can be seen here swimming in slow motion. In water, a sperm can easily swim up to an egg. If water is essential to the process of reproduction, this raises the question of how the first plants made the transition from water to land. It has long been thought that the first plants to make the transition from fresh water to land were the mosses and liverworts. This is the liverwort Marcantia polymorpha. The part of the life cycle which carries out sexual reproduction is called the gametophyte. The organism needs to live on a wet surface. The structures which look like folded umbrellas are female gametophytes or female receptacles. Many archegonia are found under the umbrellas. Fertilization takes place when a female receptacle is short and the archegonium is covered with water on the ground. This is a male gametophyte. The plate-like male receptacle has many antheridia which produce sperm. When one of these receptacles is covered with water, sperm are released to swim in the film of water from the antheridium to the archegonium to fertilize the egg. Here, there is a white mass on the surface of the male receptacle. It is a clump of sperm. Before long, they will start to swim. Bryophyte sperm have two flagella. They swim forward using the flagella at the anterior end. This is one of the characteristics of plant sperm. After fertilization in the female receptacle, the egg develops into a sporophyte to produce spores. Meanwhile, the stalk of the female receptacle elevates and opens the umbrella. The yellow mass seen here is a lump of spores. The spores are released into the air. The spores are attached to a slender thread-like cell. When the thread shakes, the spores spring off. As spores fly off and are carried far afield, the range of mosses and liverworts, or bryophytes, spreads and the population enlarges. Landing on wet ground, a spore immediately germinates. Dark spots on the back of fern leaves are masses of sporangia which contain many spores. Ferns, as well as bryophytes, use spores to increase their population. Ferns have a specialized organ called a vascular bundle through which water and nutrients absorbed from roots are transported to every part of the organism. The presence of this organ is the reason ferns are considered to be higher on the evolutionary line than bryophytes. The vascular system in ferns allows these plants to grow as high as trees. The height of the foliage gives a greater chance for the spores from these organisms to be carried further to extend the range of their habitat. Ligodium provides another example of fern reproduction. This is a sporophyte of Ligodium. Here, many spores are packed into the sporangia, which are attached to the tips of the leaves. When a spore emerges from the sporangium and successfully lands on wet ground, it germinates into a prothallium, a tiny gametophyte where sexual reproduction takes place. The gametophyte is extremely small. Many archegonia and antheridia are formed on the surface of the gametophyte. These are archegonia. When an egg matures, the entrance of the archegonium opens to receive the sperm. These are antheridia producing large numbers of sperm cells.
When the antheridium touches water, the lid opens and the sperm burst out. The sperm can swim up to an archegonium, but only if there's a thin layer of water covering the gametophytes. In mosses, or bryophytes, and ferns, otherwise known as pteridophytes, water is essential for sexual reproduction. However, the supply of water on land is irregular. So how have the multitude of land plants adapted to this environment? They have developed seeds. The cycads and ginkgo are now considered to be the most primitive species among existing seed plants. They have partially followed the same method of reproduction that the ancestors of green plants did in the water, but their solution has been to produce a similar aqueous environment in a seed. Ginkgo plants first appeared some 280 million years ago and culminated in the Mesozoic era with the dinosaurs. It's thought that dinosaurs fed on ginkgo nuts like humans now. Ginkgo biloba is therefore referred to as a living fossil because the form of its leaves and organs of reproduction are not much different from those of the prehistoric ginkgos. The reproduction processes of ginkgo biloba retain the characteristics of lower land plants. Ginkgo biloba is a dioecious plant, meaning that the male and female forms of the tree exist separately. Close observation of growth confirms that the ginkgo's male flowers open several days earlier than the female flowers. This time-lapse sequence shows the ginkgo beginning to bud. Here, a structure that looks something like a bunch of bananas develops in the axle of the leaves. These are clusters of anthers, which are generally called male flowers. This is a ginkgo male tree two weeks after budding. The male flowers are growing. When the pollen is mature, anthers rupture and pollen emerges. These small grains are ginkgo pollen, which is carried to female trees by wind currents. This is an electron micrograph of ginkgo pollen. The pollen grain is four-celled. One of the cells produces sperm. The pollen grain is therefore a flying gametophyte, though its appearance resembles a spore. This is a female tree at the time when pollen is released into the air by male plants. These small spherical structures seen among leaves are often called female flowers, but they are actually ovules. 
In early spring, the stalks bearing ovules extend upwards towards the sky. On the apex of a young ovule, there is a pore through which pollen enters. When it's ready for pollination, a mucilaginous droplet is exuded from the inside of the ovule to catch the pollen. Exudation and retraction of the droplet happens repeatedly. Retraction of the pollination droplet brings pollen grains into the pollen chamber. These are ginkgo pollen grains. flies into the droplet. Fertilization does not occur immediately after pollination because the egg is not produced at this time. After pollen enters the pollen chamber, differentiation of the female gametophyte starts in the ovule. One month after pollination, the young ovules, or female flowers, are shed from the tree when they catch no pollen. The inner structure of a pollinated ovule is shown here. This is a thin section through an ovule. It shows one of the pollen grains inside. A female gametophyte is in the process of developing. Two and a half months after pollination, the stalks turn downwards and the ovules are hanging off. The longitudinal median section of the ovule, the large green portion at the centre, shows two young archegonia in which eggs will be produced. Usually, only one of the two fertilised eggs germinates the following year. The other egg degenerates and is eventually absorbed. Four months after pollination, pollinated ovules have grown large on the female tree. Inside the archegonia, egg cells are maturing. In the meantime, a peculiar column of female gametophyte tissue, known as the tent pole, elevates between two archegonia and extends towards the pollen chamber to destroy the tissue between the pollen chamber and the archegonia. The apex of the expanded pollen tube is shown here. Both the pollen chamber and the space around the tent pole have been united to become a bigger archegonial chamber. When the two sperm are produced in the pollen tube, this large chamber is filled with fluid. This fluid could be regarded as the sea produced in the seed. A central cell which will later differentiate into two sperm, can be seen inside the stretched pollen tubes. At this stage, the archegonial chamber has not yet filled with liquid. The sea appears in the archegonial chamber around the time the sperm are released. This sequence shows how sperm cells are differentiated from the central cell, shown here. The long portion at the centre is a nucleus. The large globules in the upper and lower parts are lipid bodies. 
On the outer part, there are small globules called blepharoplasts, which are clusters of sperm cilial bases. Two donut-like nucleoli are found in the nucleus. At the apex of the pollen tube are the first and second prothallial cells and a stalk cell. When the central cell becomes elliptical and wider than the stalk cell, cell division begins to produce sperm. Chromosomes appear inside the nucleus. Here, nuclear division has finished and the mother nucleus has divided into two. Cytoplasmic granules begin to accumulate along the furrow and this leads to cytoplasmic cleavage, cytokinesis. Division of the central cell can now be seen. Look carefully at the line which has just appeared. An inwardly invaginated furrow developed and the cell divided into two. Ginkgo biloba uses the same primitive method of cytoplasmic division for reproductive cell division that is found in mesostigma. Two divided cells can be clearly seen here in longitudinal section. The lines in the middle are the cell membranes of each cell. As cytokinesis is completed, a great number of cilia develop on the spiral band from the blepharoplast. In this repeat of the process, watch the cell on the left. It shows clearly how the cilial spiral develops. As if twisted off, the central cell has just divided into two sperm cells. Now two sperm are produced. In the spring, pollen grains, or male gametophytes, are carried by wind currents to ovules, or female gametophytes. The pollen grains are caught and pulled into the pollen chamber by retraction of pollination droplets. During the five months following pollination, the pollen grows large enough to form two sperm, absorbing water and fertilizer from the female tissue, the nucellus. The eggs mature at the same time. As the sperm get ready to swim, the female gametophyte prepares the mother sea in the archegonial chamber. The precise timing of this process is one of the miracles of nature. The pollen tube ruptures and the sperm swim in the sea toward the eggs. As we've already seen, ginkgo sperm swim forward with cilia at the front, just like the caraphytes, bryophytes and pteridophytes. The cilia are arranged in a spiral. Here, in an electron micrograph, can be seen the fine structure of the cilial bases. The basal bodies of the cilia are aligned in parallel and are attached to a complex, multilayered structure. This multilayered structure of the cilial apparatus is characteristic of sperm and swimming cells of organisms in the evolutionary line to land plants. Those algae that have no link with land plants, such as Chlamydomonas, do not have a multilayered structure. During fertilization, Ginkgo biloba excretes reproductive liquid from its own tissue to create the sea in the seed. Compared to mosses and ferns, Ginkgo sperm can swim safely in this inner sea and can reach the egg cells more successfully.
the egg cells attract nearby sperm to the entrance of the archegonium. Fertilization occurs about four months after pollination, between the end of August and the beginning of September. This is the ovule of Cycas revoluta at the time of fertilization. Fertilization of the cycad resembles that of ginkgo biloba. In October, sperm are produced in the pollen tube. These are mature cycad sperm. The sperm have just been released from the pollen tube. The sperm of cycads may be the largest in the plant world. They have tens of thousands of cilia. They also swim in the sea toward the egg cells. Here a sperm enters the archegonium. The dark part at the center is the entrance of the archegonium which holds the egg cells. The sperm swims around the entrance, sensing the attracting chemicals that are probably released by the egg. The sperm now enters the archegonium. It takes about 20 seconds for a healthy sperm to pass through, and it has to elongate its shape to get through the extremely narrow entrance. After entering the archegonium, the sperm recovers its shape. It has just entered. Fertilization and fusion of the sperm and the egg cell then follow. Conifers are gymnosperms just like ginkgo in the cycads, but they do not produce ciliated sperm. They extend pollen tubes in the ovule and send their non ciliate sperm cells directly to the egg cells like most other advanced angiosperms. Here are some examples of male pine flowers. They release pollen, which is carried by wind currents to female flowers. This is a female pine cone. The pines need about three years from the development of reproductive organs to the maturation of seeds. Angiosperms are more advanced than conifers. The pollen of angiosperms is carried not only by wind currents, but also by birds and insects. This is Terenia fornieri, which shows the double fertilization characteristic of angiosperms. At the center is a pistil, and the upper and lower parts are stamens. The moment pollen grains attach to the tip of the stigma, it encloses them. Here, pollen adheres to the stigma. Pollen tubes extend, absorbing fluid produced from the pistil. pollen tubes grow downwards in the style, towards eggs in the embryo sac. Here is a section of a style showing many extending pollen tubes.
Each is a long, slender cell containing cytoplasm which is actively streaming. The fluid environment inside the pollen tube and the style is kept stable. It resembles a pipe full of water. Here, under a fluorescence microscope, two nuclei can be seen inside the pollen tube. They are pollen tubal and generative nuclei. At the bottom of the picture, they are moving towards the anterior end of the pollen tube. A generative cell will divide into two sperm cells. Now the cell division starts. Immediately after nuclear division, cytokinesis produces two sperm cells. The sperm cells of angiosperms have no flagella or cilia because they do not swim, though they play the same role as sperm. The protoplasmic streaming and the movement of the nuclei in the pollen tube seems not to be random, but more of a planned migration targeting the eggs. Terenia's embryo sac is seen here protruding from the micropile. This allows us to look at the interior and to analyze the fertilization process in detail. Here, part of the embryo sac, an egg, two synergids and half of the central cell are outside the micropile. Synergids attract the approaching pollen tube to the embryo sac with chemicals. Sperm cells move towards the apex of the pollen tube. In Turenia, a pollen tube will reach an embryo sac approximately nine hours after pollination. In Cycus revoluta and Ginkgo biloba, the time between pollination and fertilization is three to four months, and in pines, about three years. Compared to gymnosperms, angiosperms take a shorter time for fertilization. This results in a higher success rate in fertilization. Here, the apex of a pollen tube is firmly inserted into the center of an embryo sac. The pollen tube bursts open and protoplasm rushes in. Carried along in this flow, two sperm cells also enter the sac. One of the sperm cells fuses with the egg and the other with the central cell. This type of fertilization is called double fertilization, characteristic of angiosperms. Double fertilization was first reported almost simultaneously with the discovery of ginkgo sperm. A hundred years later, the entire process of double fertilization was video recorded for the first time. Mosses and ferns discharge sperm into water externally and fertilization takes place there. Cycads and ginkgo produce a sea inside their seeds, where the sperm swim and fertilize. Angiosperms, on the other hand, send sperm cells direct to eggs through extended pollen tubes. The process of reproduction is impressive to watch in any organism, because it is the key to life itself. Plant reproduction processes are directly related to plant evolution. The green organisms on Earth are proof of this, and the history of evolution is carried in their seeds. The reproduction process in this plant provides a unique key to our understanding of the evolution of higher plants. The budding of further evolution begins with the budding of this tree.